People have asked me why I became a public Quaker and instead of a private Quaker, which I have tried to describe, uh, uh, going from being uh, happy to keep my Quakerism boxed into a little compartment I opened up on Sunday morning and put back into being a more open Quaker throughout the week. To me, it has to do with stewardship. Uh, we talk a lot about stewardship as Quakers, stewardship of money, stewardship of the planet, of our planet Earth, and so on. But what about stewardship of the American, of the uh, Religious Society of Friends? Uh, we are the inheritors of a tremendous history of people who have changed the world. My name is Norval Reese, and uh, I live in Newtown, Pennsylvania, and I'm a member of Newtown Quaker Meeting, Newtown Friends Meeting. The Newtown Meeting, uh, when I joined it, uh, really wasn't doing much outreach, and I was became clerk of the meeting, and one time a, um, a chap called up and wanted to, um, this about 25 years ago, wanted to come over and, and film the uh, graveyard. So he came over to Newtown, and we spent about half an hour around the graveyard, and I showed him various graves and Edward Hicks and so on and so forth. And uh, I said, would you like to see inside the meeting house? He said, oh, sure, that'd be great. And he, he walked in the meeting house and said, this is beautiful. He said, what's it used for now? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> actually, Quakers meet here. <laughs> there are 250 of us or so. That was part of it. I said, you know, People just don't know that we're around. Somebody once said, "If I said, Norval, you've, you've been in, in marketing, uh, in business, and have had a certain amount of success, but uh, if, 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 if you share your skills in that area with your, in your business, uh, why not they share them with your Quaker meeting? And it, it never occurred to me to share them with my Quaker meeting because you know, I segregated my business from my religious life. Um, some good Quakers said we shouldn't do that. We should have a seamless life. Our, our lives should be patterns, examples to all people in all countries all the time. And uh, so that gave me a lot of uh, things to, to think about. And I thought, well, yes, we should open our doors and be willing to uh, let people know who we are and that we still exist. When people ask me who Quakers are, uh, it's it's kind of a it's an elevator speech that uh, doesn't fit too nicely into a an elevator time period. But I like to because I have a theological background. I like to say, well, there are three radical theological con concepts that Quakers are based on, which are really radical. Uh, one that there is that of God in every person. Every single person has that spark of the divine in them, whoever they are, wherever they are. The second um, point is that of continuing revelation, that people can learn more about God, have more revealed to them than they currently know today. And point three is the, uh, the perfectibility of man, which is also radical, that man can, men, women, people, can improve. They can become more perfect, as it were, more like Jesus, more like the divine. So one piece of this uh, private Quaker, public Quaker, is to, uh, as a Quaker, uh, yes, it's okay to acknowledge that Quakers have done wonderful things. You don't have to, you know, push them under the carpet or hiding behind the door. The Nobel Peace Prize is a good example. Uh, I had never seen it. I finally talked the American President's Service Committee into bringing it out to Newtown Meeting so we could see it, even though they had, they had a policy not to take it out of the lockbox. Well, it belongs to all Quakers. Uh, why not show it to people? It's okay. Uh, it, you don't have to be embarrassed about having won a lot of people uh, gave a good portion of their lives in refugee work in, in Europe you know, when that was awarded. So that's the kind of thing. I, I like to tell the story of uh, Dr. Rogers' boathouse on Cape Cod. Dr. Rogers is a 
wonderful kind of gruff old guy, and he had the wonderful mysterious boathouse. Had all the tools you would ever need to fix a toy, to fix a boat, to fix anything. But he had rules. One, you had to be invited to get in. Two, you could borrow a tool if he liked you. <laughs> and you promised to bring it back. And three, you had to bring it back in better shape than when you took it. We have inherited the doctor's boathouse. It's a wonderful place, a serious place with everything we need. And we have borrowed it in our own lives. We've benefited from it tremendously. So I think we have an obligation to leave it in better condition than when we found it. And that means in every possible way, um, in terms of values, in terms of practice, and financially, in terms of membership, do everything we can to make sure that this wonderful institution uh, we call the Quakers or Religious Society of Friends um, remains and prospers after we're gone. Thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. We'd like to thank Friends Fiduciary for sponsoring this one. Friends Fiduciary is a Quaker nonprofit that's been providing socially responsible investment services for the past 120 years. Over 390 Quaker meetings, churches, and organizations rely on Friends Fiduciary for excellent returns, knowing their investments are aligned with Quaker values. Friends Fiduciary can also help individuals who want to support causes they care about through donor advised funds and charitable gift annuities. You can learn more at their website, friendsfiduciary.org, or you can look for the link below this video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great Thursday.